Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask you to bless this convocation of the 24th Annual Arizona State Fire School. Bless the instructors and all the participants here. May it be a time of learning, of improving on skills, and of forging new friendships. We pray also for all engaged in the fire service of our various communities. We thank you for what they offer by way of protection, the safety that they afford us, and we pray that you preserve them in good health, keep them free from harm and accidents, that they continue in their good work. We also wish to remember in a special way those who have died this past year, those in the line of duty and those who have died of natural causes, but who who gave so much in the cause of uh, fire prevention and fire safety. We pray that they may be at peace with you, Lord. So bless us now and give us your wisdom, give us your spirit of cooperation during these days ahead. Amen. This morning we have a real special service for you. You know, in the state of Arizona, we have a lot of different groups that represent different factions of the fire service. We've got fire chiefs associations, we have fire districts associations, we've got fire training groups, we've got unions, we've got firefighters associations. Uh, we have a lot of groups that represent themselves. The list really goes on. We don't have a group, however, that represents all of us. Today, we feel that the Mesa Fire Department Honor Guard is going to do that in the ceremony that they're gonna to present to us. Today, we feel like that representation of all the firefighters in the state is gonna change by having this group. The members of the State Fire Training Committee tied into a dream of Bob Costello's here, and that was to, to present a true fallen firefighter memorial service at the State Fire School. We've all heard the saying that uh, the fire service is 200 years of tradition unimpeded by progress. Hopefully those of you here today will attempt to change some of that. We all know that the fire service is changing dramatically. We have several new classes here this year that represent those changes. It's at this morning's general session, however, that we wanna promote some of the powerful traditions that the fire service has. Today will be the first time in the history of the fire school that we will have a fallen firefighter memorial service. This ceremony is our way of recognizing those men and women who have given their lives to and for the fire service. This tradition that many of us in Arizona have never been a, been a part of is one way all of us through all the years can be tied together. It reminds us that we truly are family. Now I'd like to ask State Fire Marshal Dwayne Pell and State Training Director Bob Costello to place a memorial wreath.
It is with great honor that we now recognize the Mesa Fire Department Honor Guard who will direct the remainder of the memorial service. We pay tribute to those who have fulfilled their commitment to our profession. Some of them making the ultimate sacrifice by laying down their lives in the service of their fellow man. Others heroically losing the battle to cancer or to other medical problems. We meet today to remember these brothers and sisters, to never forget their sacrifice, to never forget that we indeed continue to perform the most dangerous job in the world. We will now begin reading their names. From the Bullhead, Bullhead City Fire Department. Ken Fulvard. Pat Reynolds. From the Chandler Fire Department. Daryl Crisp. From the Shinley Community Fire Department. William F. Smith, Jr. From the Chloride Volunteer Fire Department. Donna Lynn Tomes. From Jerome Fire Department. Glenn Bache. Fran Matthews. Murat Manith. Joseph Pekarich. Philip Pekarich. Nick Latich. Harry Amster. From Lake Havasu City Fire Department. Leland Hansen. James Spangler. Ron Holmgren. John Bratz. Jerry Cox. Dale Alvord. From the City of Mesa Fire Department. John Owens. Winston West. 
Ray Sturtevant. Jack Stevens. Gary Peters. Dillis DeWitt. David Karam. Chuck Inman. From the Phoenix Fire Department. Al Cruz. Chauncey Ray. Walter Kelson. Tim Hale. Ricky Pierce. Randy Potts. Dale Lockett. Gary Picari. Frank Zalazinski. Dale Brandt. Mike Callahan. Steve Sullivan. From the Peoria Fire Department. Craig Taylor. John Valentine. From Springervale Fire Department. Dave Clark. The history of firefighting is closely associated with the ringing of the bell. It was the bell that signaled the start of duty, and through the days and nights, each alarm was sounded by a bell. It called them to fight fires and to place their lives in jeopardy for the good of their fellow man. And when the fire was out and the alarm had been completed, it was the bell that signaled its end. Dean Alfang wrote, and I quote, I do not choose to be a common man. It is my right to be uncommon. I seek opportunity to develop whatever talents God gave me, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dulled by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk, to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to barter incentive for a dole. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the fulfillment of the stale calm of utopia. I will not trade freedom for beneficence, nor my dignity for a handout. I will never cower before any earthly master, nor bend to any threat. It is my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid to think and act myself. Enjoy the benefits of my creations and to face the world boldly and say this, with God's help, I have done." Unquote. We seek strong words and symbols that give us a better understanding of our feelings when we experience a loss. And we use these symbols and words to reflect the devotion our brothers and sisters had for their duties. The sounding of the bell, a signal, a special signal, of three rings, three times each, represented the end of their duties and that they were returning to quarters. And now, for all Arizona firefighters who have completed their tasks, their duties well done, they have given their best. For our brothers and sisters, their last alarm, they have gone home.
follow up this ceremony, please? I'd like to tell you just a little bit about the Mesa Fire Department Honor Guard. These people have bought all their own uniforms, all their own instruments. It's on their own time, and which they've dedicated to developing this Honor Guard, the first real Honor Guard of its type in the state of Arizona. This is the second time that they have performed. Um, the Honor Guard itself would like to recognize Master Piper, Dr. Rick Knowles for his commitment to excellence in his work with the Honor Guard. We appreciate all of their efforts in being here this morning, and I'd like to give them one more round of applause, please. Thank you. <laughs> this, if at this time we could go ahead and bring up all of our dignitaries uh, on stage, please. Well, once again, I'd like to welcome you to the 24th uh, Annual State Fire School. It's really good seeing this hall full. For those of you that have uh, been to fire schools in the past, uh, and when it first started, uh, there were just a handful of classes. This year, we're going to have 28 classes that we're offering, and they really do represent a lot of the changes that are taking place uh, in the fire service. You know, one aspect of this ceremony today was for those who have fallen. There's another aspect of the ceremony, however, and, and that's for those, uh, the rest of us, who are left to carry the torch. There's a lot of talk given to the fire service being a family. Over the, the next several days, you're going to be able to make this family even closer. In this hall this morning, we have firefighters from all different types of departments. What we on the committee are going to ask of you is that you look for the similarities that you have with each other instead of the differences. I've heard it said that at times, uh, the fire service is its own worst enemy. Over the next several days, we really don't want career firefighters saying, well, you know, volunteers, they just can't act as professionals. We don't want rural departments saying, well, you know, we'd like to work with those municipal departments, but they just don't know how to fight an interface fire without a hydrant. <laughs> we don't want distinctions drawn between structural firefighters and wildland firefighters. And we don't want to hear the East is least and the West is best, all right? We hope that over the next few days together, you can show that the statement that the fire service is its own worst enemy is certainly not the case. Right now, I'd like for those people, if you are a career firefighter, would you stand up, please? If you are a full-time career firefighter, please stand. Okay, that's an excellent representation. Thank you. If you are a career firefighter and also a volunteer somewhere, would you stand, please? Excellent. If you are a vol... think about this special ceremony that we had today. Although the firefighters that died were from all areas of the fire service, when their names were read, there wasn't any distinction made between them. In the end, fire departments don't succeed, people do. We ask that you reach out and make new contacts over the next several days. Talk, fire, compare and contrast what you do in your departments and what people do in other departments. Make some new friends. It's like Rick stated in his opening comments there, choose not to be common, choose to be uncommon, choose to be special. If you make that choice, both you and the fire service will be better for it. And we really thank you for being here today. At this time, it's uh, my privilege to introduce to you the State 
Fire Marshal, Mr. Dwayne Pell. Fire Department Honor Guard, that was very uh, spectacular. I think uh, they deserve uh, a lot of thanks. The other thing is, uh, it's always a pleasure for me to come and uh, welcome everybody here to this 24th annual State Fire School. I'd like to make a couple of introductions if I could. As you know, most of you, that the Office of the State Fire Marshal is in uh, the Arizona Department of Building and Fire Safety. And I'd like to introduce the director of, uh, of that department, Mr. Eric Borg. I saw you here earlier. Eric, where are you? He's back in the back. The other group I'd like to mention, uh, it's, it's appropriate when they had all the volunteers who work hard and don't get paid, I thought they were talking about the fire marshal staff. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to at least have all of the uh, deputies and our staff from the State Fire Marshal's Office here right down front. Just stand up, wave to the crowd if you would. I appreciate uh, all your efforts. The back right behind, they didn't stand up, but they, they run the whole thing there, you know that. But anyway, it's again a pleasure to welcome all of you here. I think this is the biggest uh, crowd ever, and it keeps growing every year, and I thank uh, Bob Costello and particularly the uh, fire training committee. It's amazing the work uh, that goes into putting this on and to see how smoothly it, it goes uh, off after it's all over. It's amazing uh, how you do it. My, my hat's off to all of you who work and I know probably by next Monday or Tuesday you'll be meeting to plan next year's fire school. So again, welcome all of you here. Enjoy your stay. Uh, take some knowledge home with you and we'll see you next year. Thank you. Next comments are going to come from the Vice Mayor of the City of Mesa, Mr. Pat Gilbert. Thanks. I'm really very honored to be here, and boy, am I proud of the Mesa Fire Department. Uh, what an organization, what a group of men and women that serve our community, and I wanted just to commend you to that notion that motherhood apple pie and fire service is so integrated into the well-being of every community in this state nationwide and wherever fire protection is offered for its citizens. And I want to just take a moment and personally thank each and every one of you for your choice toward that end, your choice to help make our world a little bit safer. And really, it, it was so touching to see this morning's ceremony, and uh, I feel so very strongly about that commitment that each and every one of you has made. And it is an honor to welcome you to the city of Mesa on behalf of the mayor and the council and really all of the community. This is, as I understand, the 11th year here, and we are proud to have you. I hope that you take back with you to your communities, knowledge, friendship, and an experience that uh, inspires you to return to our town next year. And once again, thanks for choosing Mesa. We welcome you here. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next gentleman I'd like to uh, present to you is a, he's been a member of the State Training Committee until just recently for many years. He's a great individual, has put tremendous efforts into the State Fire School for many years. Uh, with the change of his position with the Mesa Fire Department, he was no longer able to fulfill the requirements on the Training Committee. But it's, it's a real honor for me to introduce to you to the Assistant Fire Chief of the City of Mesa, Carl Geis. Thank you, Don. On behalf of the Fire Chief, Dennis Compton, I'd like to welcome all of you to Mesa. I'd like to let you know that we treat all of our customers as well as we can, and we are constantly looking for ways to improve. 
While you are here in the city of Mesa, you are one of our customers, and if there's anything we can do to assist you, we'd be very happy to do that. Please stop by our fire stations and visit with our firefighters. There's some excellent opportunities there for both of us to network with each other and to learn from each other. We would love it if you would do that. If there's anything that our staff people can do to assist you, we'd be happy to do that. On behalf of all of the staff and members of the Mesa Fire Department, we wish you a very safe and rewarding fire school. And one closing note that I would like to make is to the Honor Guard, we are very proud of you. Thank you. Good morning. You don't know what a relief it is when I can stand up here and look out and see people in the audience. I worry about that every year. One of these days nobody will show up. Um, there's a lot that goes on and there is no one individual that can take care of that. Um, I rely on, on lots of folks to ensure that this program goes on and that the quality stays at a level that it, that it should. Um, first and foremost is the Arizona State Fire Training Committee. And if you would please rise and be recognized for all of your efforts in the production calls. After the posters were mailed out, most of them ask, where did you come up with that idea? And I'd like to tell you that it involved a lot of thought and soul searching, but it was probably a Bud Light vision that, that, <laughs> that created it. Um, the real story is several years ago in Jack's office, hidden on the back wall, he had a picture of a fire truck. And I looked at that, and it was just one of those pictures you looked at, and you weren't sure if you really liked it, but you really didn't not like it. The more I looked at it, the more I liked it. So I told him, I said, Jack, do me a favor. Would you get me a copy of that photo? Now, for those of you that don't know Jack Jordan, he's an award-winning photographer for the Phoenix Fire Department. I thought that was something that he could do for me. Six years later, photo's still in Jack's office. I don't have one. <laughs> went to Jack's office, took it off the wall, went to the printer, and we sit down, and we made a poster out of it. I was determined to get a copy of that. This is Jack's 20th year with the Arizona State Fire School. Jack is our AV tech, our photographer, my confidant, and uh, just makes things happen. And I would like to recognize his efforts at this time. The next gentleman I like to bring up is a, uh, is a real cog in uh, the State Fire Training Committee. He works as a treasurer. He puts together all the sale good items that we have. He organizes the raffles. Today he's going to talk to you about scholarship. Um, all the committee members truly appreciate how a guy from Honeywell can be so involved in the fire service in Arizona. But uh, Ron Ganos, would you come on up? Thanks. Special presentation today. So if you would, please welcome Dan Matlick of United Fire. Good morning. Let me start today by asking each of you a question. Why are you here? Why are you attending the Arizona State Fire School? I bet each of you has a unique answer. But there's one thing for sure. No one twisted your arm. Your mommy didn't make you come. Instead, there's something inside you, something inspirational that's led you here. What a mighty bond this is that you all share. I congratulate you for being here. Now you already know that my purpose for being here is to announce this year's United Firefighter of the Year. This is the fourth year we've presented this award and it's the fourth year we've shown that by recognizing the, fire, the deeds of the firefighters throughout Arizona, we're inspiring others to excel. Our theme for this year's campaign has been the cowboy, the legendary American hero, and the firefighter, the contemporary American hero. Let me take a moment 
and describe some of the things these two icons have in common. A cowboy often wears nice looking chaps. Firefighters are nice looking chaps. <laughs> a cowboy is someone with guts and a horse. A firefighter is someone with guts enough to ride a horse, but prefers a fire engine. A cowboy knows that riding a bronc is like dancing with a girl. The trick is to match your partner's rhythm. A firefighter knows better than to talk about stuff like that. <laughs> a cowboy is at home on the range. A firefighter can cook on a range, gas, or electric. <laughs> of course, I could go on and on about how cowboys and firefighters are alike. And I'll mention a few slightly more serious parallels a little later. But right now, I'd like to thank a different group of heroes. They're the ones who make this award possible, our corporate sponsors. We call them the steadfast American heroes because they're always here to help. They're the backbone of our program. The generosity and passion of our corporate sponsors reflects the greatness of the men and women we've come here today to honor. United Fire is proud to be associated with these distinguished firms. Let's give them a hand. Have you ever wondered how difficult it must be to pick the one best from a brigade of superheroes? That's the challenge that was faced by this year's judges. This group of solemn-like individuals consisted of Bruce Campbell, Gary Ells, Bob Hansen, John Heil, and Susan Sherwin. The process of judging was as follows. All nominations were presented factually as submitted, except that all references to the nominees, uh, departments, and cities were deleted. Judging was based on the nominees' heroic achievements or contributions to life safety. The judging was done completely independently. United Fire and our sponsors had no part whatsoever in the winner's selection. And believe me, given the fact that there were so many deserving nominees, I'm glad I didn't have to make the decision. I do, however, thank the judges most sincerely for their time-consuming and studious deliberations. Let's also give them a hand. The cowboy, the firefighter, both truly American heroes. Both are important to our history and our culture. But why? Why are they the stuff from which legends are made? Why do we look at them with such respect and admiration? Perhaps it's because they represent the best part of our human spirit. The cowboy of our childhood was a courageous adventurer, a person with true strength and great grit. The firefighter is a hero in the most honest sense, putting his or her life on the line for others, selfless, brave, heroic. It's difficult to find another group that appeals so universally to our eyes and our emotions. Yet neither the cowboy nor the firefighter pretend to be anyone but themselves. No heroics for fame, no grandstanding for glory. For these extraordinary American heroes, personal daring is an instinct, not a means to an end. Earlier, I congratulated you for being here at this school. I congratulate you also for becoming part of a legend. Your presence here suggests you're cut from the same cloth as the heroes I've just mentioned. Your spirit is hearty, your optimism unflagging. Americans admire those who stand apart from the crowd. We applaud those with pure virtues and elemental toughness. As you prepare here to save lives, be prepared to accept the admiration of our nation. You, our heroic firefighters, will coexist with the cowboys as ideals of the American spirit. Be proud. Okay, I promised you I was here today to announce this year's Firefighter of the Year. As I do so, I remind you that by honoring this one individual, we're honoring all of you and people throughout Arizona like you. Now, with no horsing around, it's time for me to name the 1997 Firefighter of the Year. 
And the winner is Terry Self of the Mesa Fire Department. Terry, come on up. Terry, I am immensely pleased to present you this award as the 1997 winner. Thank you. Terry overcame unthinkable physical and mental, mental obstacles to lead in the rescue of two young brothers from atop a 120-foot electrical transmission tower. The fearlessness of this hero and the complex human drama of this event captivated many across our nation due to live television coverage. The drama began at 4 p.m. on February 11th. A 10-year-old autistic boy with a fixation for heights climbed a 12-story high powered tower. His 17-year-old brother with a pronounced fear for heights followed in a rescue attempt. Responding to the scene, after a 911 call, the Mesa Fire Department and its technical rescue team developed a plan to rescue the youths. Fortunately, the technical rescue team had only hours before discussed such a scenario. Terry, home on a day off, viewed a bulletin on the incident and responded immediately to the scene. He volunteered to be the lead climber with technical rescue member Jeff Mitchell to follow. The power company began the process of closing the circuit to the tower and diverting the 230,000 volts of electricity. As this was completed, the power company advised there was a strong possibility spontaneous static discharge with a minimum of 20,000 volts still remained in the lines. This extremely dangerous situation was intensified by fading sunlight and falling temperatures along with television helicopters hovering nearby and spectators gathering below. Terry and Jeff were taken to the 60-foot level by an aerial ladder. The arduous free climb then began. Terry assumed the lead and reached the boys 15 minutes later. Terry used his skills as a firefighter, paramedic, and most importantly, as a parent to assure the boys they were safe and to prepare them for the descent. Once back upon the ground, Everyone celebrated the relief from danger and the joy of success. The event seemed to last a second and a lifetime. It will endure forever in the minds of so many. Terry's actions were indeed a rare demonstration of courage. The significance goes beyond the who, what, where, and why of this achievement. Terry, you have given us context by which we can measure and appreciate greatness. And for this, we are forever grateful. Congratulations. Since we know you're Since we know you're probably way too polite to ask, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you about some of the great prizes you lassoed in here. As they say out riding the range, it's the man that makes the cowboy, not the clothes he wears. But when it comes to firefighters, the right duds can sure make a difference. That's why we want you to have an advanced technology, custom-fitted turnout and coat from Lion Apparel. And you probably know that a 10-gallon hat is a cowboy's trademark. Now, I can't say if the helmet you'll get from E.D. Bullard can hold 10 gallons, but it'll sure give you lots of protection, and it's going to make you look like a million bucks. Next are some things that are sure to trigger some great memories. First, you've won a weekend for two at Tucson's premier resort, the Western La Paloma. I definitely suggest you check out the saloon. <laughs> Next, you'll receive a pair of season tickets to Phoenix International Raceway, where we will acknowledge your accomplishments before the 70,000 fans attending the NASCAR's hard-charging season finale the last weekend in October. Finally, the local sheriff called and said there was a reward for whoever captured the 1997 Firefighter of the Year trophy. You captured it. The reward is yours. Here's a check for $1,000. Congratulations.
I want to thank United Fire and Dan. Um, he told me I'd get a chance to come up here and talk to all of you and express some of my feelings on, on Firefighter of the Year. Can you hear me in the back? Okay, I'll try to speak up. I'm not used to this. Uh, this is pretty daunting to come up here and stand before such a large group of firefighters. I have 19 years in the fire service here in Mesa, and firefighters have always been my heroes. Uh, so to be recognized in front of such a large group of my heroes is, is awesome to me. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's equivalent to meeting the royal family. So I just want to thank, uh, of course, Mesa Fire. The Gil Damiani was the uh, command officer on this call. Uh, as all of you know, everything we do is a team effort. Uh, I, I appreciate the recognition. <laughs> but certainly, uh, you know, it was a team effort and everyone uh, deserves the recognition. Uh, Jeff Mitchell that was on the tower with me, the technical rescue team that was down on the ground coming up with a plan on how they were going to rescue us. Um, there was a lot that goes on, as we all know. Everything from hazardous materials mitigation, technical rescue scenarios, fire suppression, fire prevention, everything we do is a team effort, and certainly no one person really deserves to be called the Firefighter of the Year. So as I look out here and see everyone, and I know you're here to to increase your skills in firefighting, to increase your knowledge. I look out and I see the best of the best, and I'm proud to, to be associated with you. Thank you. Hold on, partner. There's one more thing. To cowboys, horses are partners. All right. Not just pets. To firefighters, your, your departments are your partners, not just your pals. So to reward your partners, United Fire is giving your department a $500 credit towards future orders. We know you'll help them spend it wisely. <laughs> I'd just like to say that I hope the helmet that E.D. Bullard is going to give me is big enough to hold my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> The Firefighter of the Year campaign is now over for another year. It's been a wonderful experience to celebrate cowboy charisma and firefighter fortitude. As we look to next year's campaign, it's easy to imagine that the name of one of you may be submitted as a winner. Those who have come before you have offered the following advice. Soak in the knowledge that's available here. Believe in yourself. Be prepared to answer the call to action. And remember, a man is not born a cowboy or a firefighter. He becomes one. Now is your time to become your dream. Good luck to you from United Fire, and remember, life safety is serious work. We'll look forward to the fifth Firefighter of the Year Award next year. Uh, we'd like to go ahead and take a 20 minute break. At 10.15 sharp, we will start with two more outstanding presentations. There's coffee out in the square right here, so if we could have everybody back in here a little bit before 10.15, we'd appreciate it. Considered firefighter of the year is just uh, you know it's a team team thing that we do and and everyone here deserves it so I was I'm I'm just deeply honored. Now going back to what happened up there on that tower back what was it a few months ago? It was in February. What were you thinking going up the tower? Well, I was just thinking about um, uh, the importance of getting to the children uh, fast before something happened 
and I, I was basically just concentrating on getting to them so I could secure them and they wouldn't fall. Did it seem to you that this particular effort was particularly heroic at the time? Well, Jack, no, one, two. Uh, you know, I see firefighters uh, take a calculated risk every day to to help others, and, and this is just another incident of, like that, uh, you know, things we do every day. And so I, I didn't know that such a big deal would be made of it, but uh, I'm really proud to represent Arizona's firefighters. It's Firefighter of the Year. All right. A lot of people don't remember that. You were, I think, off duty. You were at home watching what was going on and actually just jumped on your feet and said, I need to get down there and help. Can you kind of refresh everybody's memory on that day? Yeah, that's correct. I, I was off duty, and um, my wife had, had uh, you know, turned the channel to, to the news, and she says, you know, she called me in to said, hey, look at this. And, and I realized it was here in Mesa. It was our, our guys. And, and I thought, well, I'm going to go up the scene and see if I can. It was close to my house, so I thought, well, I'll go see if I can be of any help or or uh, learn something. And uh, so I went to the scene, and uh, the, uh, some of the regular technical rescue team was off. So I just somehow ended up going up to help. And uh, that's what happened. <laughs> Walk us through it. When you got to the scene? Well, when I got to the scene, I, I, I had already devised a plan. We had been talking about this uh, exact, this kind of rescue uh, a couple of days before, and even that day. And um, so I had a plan in mind on how we should, should get them down. And so when I got there, I just asked uh, wh where we were at, and um, I was asked to go up and, and make, make the climb up. And so we just went through with our plan that we had talked to about before and, and knew exactly what we were going to do. And um, next thing you know, I'm up on the tower. <laughs> you know, uh, I didn't realize there was all the news media there, you know, that, that it was live on TV, any of that. When I came down and they told me that, you know, my main concern was my family is watching this on TV. I hope it didn't scare them or anything. So. Since then, you've gotten a little bit of media attention as well, including today. That's going to be a little... Yes, I've gotten a, a lot of media attention, and uh, it's kind of nice to, to bring public attention to, to the work that firefighters do. Personally, it's a little embarrassing to be singled out because what we do is a team thing. I really couldn't have made the rescue without my team, you know, without knowing they were there to support me and, and to back me up. And There's a lot that goes on besides the guy that you see on the tower. So. So uh, it's personally a little embarrassing to get all this attention, but it's nice to, to focus public attention on, on the efforts of firefighters in well, all over the state. It can't be embarrassing to be singled out as firefighter of the year, though. Well, that's something to be really proud of. Proud of. I, I'm, I'm deeply honored. I, I, you know, it's just amazing. I can't really express how I feel because it's just, uh, I'm just in shock. You know, it's, it's, it's really an honor. Studio A, Fox 10 News at 6. Well, here's the kind of story we love to tell you about a Mesa firefighter honored tonight for making the most dramatic rescue of the year. Terry Self helped rescue an autistic boy and his older brother from the top of an SRP tower just a few months ago. Everyone got down safely. Today, Self said, hey, it was just another day on the job. Uh, it's kind of nice to, to bring public attention to, to the work that firefighters do. Personally, it's a little embarrassing to be singled out because what we do is a team thing. We were all nervous for him when he was up on the tower, and today when he was up there speaking, it's, this is really neat. We're really proud of him. Self-credits all the Mesa firefighters who brought the boys off that tower.